Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Stanley Cup. Thank you, thank you. He flew in from Chicago, and boy, are the keeper of Mee's arms tired. Was this a crowd or a jury? Looks like it's gonna be Los Angeles or New York for me this year. I know what you're saying to yourself, New York. Hey, Stanley, aren't you a championship trophy? <laughs> there we go, one guy's laughing. He must be an LA Kings fan. Might be the only one on the planet. <laughs> ah, it's gonna be a great series. Uh, how about we make things a little more interesting? Uh, in addition to me, the winning city gets Derek Fisher. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, if LA wins, we'll probably be pouring champagne into movie stars' mouths. New York wins, homeless guys are gonna be lining up to take a crap in my bowl. <laughs> Come to think of it, if LA wins, Charles Sheen's gonna wanna do both. I know you're all expecting a Donald Sterling joke, but hey, who am I to talk? He's done more for African Americans than I have. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, you know I'm just messing with you, Grant Fuhrer. <laughs> all right, you guys have been great. Hey, I gotta go. Uh, but hey, but stick around because the box score starts now. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Cowards for Box Score. Hello and welcome to the Box Score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles, and I'm joined, as I am every day, by the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. Gentlemen, the dreaded wheel of punishment was brought out of storage in preparation for your Belmont Stakes wager. Polly, are you going to arrange a watch party and will the uh, cameras be rolling? That's a good question. I actually suggested that we go because it's like less than an hour from here and uh, didn't get much momentum there. I will be in New York City on Saturday, so maybe we can have some type of get together. Perhaps, McLovin, in your box appearance, you said you might not show up for uh, work on Monday if you lose. Uh, why are you being such a pansy? Hmm. Client with me being such a pansy. Um, have you ever faced a wheel of punishment, Brock? <laughs> it's easy for you to sit out there and judge us. Uh, who we face the wheel, dude. We're in the wheel. You've we're never the... been put on the line. Yeah, we're, we're in the under beach fire, man. You, don't, you have wall. no idea. You have no idea. It's not just the, what you're going to face. It's not knowing what you're going to face. It's terror. So you've been to a wheel of punishment. I don't want to hear about how I'm a pansy for not facing the wheel. Suggestions are getting more and more awkward and cruel as the uh, days get closer to the more end of the cruel. week. Easy there, Colonel Jessup. You reached out to Dan Nation and asked them to suggest punishments for you guys. And Seton, you have a, uh, a few favorites, don't you? Yeah, right off the bat, the, the uh, tone was kind of set with uh, reenact the lady in the tramp scene uh, where they're sharing spaghetti dinner and sort of do the <laughs> thing. And then reenact oh. the uh, final dancing <laughs> scene from <laughs> Dirty Dancing, uh, which is really just an iconic moment of cinema. Well, we love those suggestions, so we wanted to give Dan Nation a sneak peek as to what they might see if you guys lose. Check out Polly and Fritzy sharing a romantic <laughs> spaghetti dinner. <laughs> Polly, Close who's up. picking up uh, the check there? Yeah. I don't know. Well, we all know that one, but you know, what if it was? What's if Fritzy, Fritzy had cooked a meal? That'd be even more punishment. He's never cooked a meal before. Is that punishment yeah, on Fritzy or you? Both. Uh, Seton and McLovin, we didn't want to forget about you. Look at the grace and beauty as Seton lifts McLovin off the dance floor. McLovin, yeah. would Seton maybe uh, get a peck on the cheek after such a graceful lift? I don't know, I always picture myself on bottom. What? What? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I, I weigh a lot more. I think I would have to lift you, Seton. I gotta be honest, I kinda pictured it the other way around too, so I guess maybe we've thought this through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, if the wheel does land on the dirty dancing option, uh, we think you guys might be into it. He gives her like the, oh yo, like you can do it, yeah. And then she does oh, this. She's like, <sighs> <laughs> no, you gotta do it. We gotta, we're gonna have to hire a professional dance instructor to teach us how to do it. <laughs> What about they're doing like the ding ding ding? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Now, 
<laughs> Does he wear those like really tight pants? The kind if I wanted to have like a Mikhail Barizikov type bulge in, I could. I feel like there is a dancing outfit. <laughs> I want to go all out. I want if this ends up being the punishment. A little tutu. I think we need to hire a dance instructor and make it like a 24/7 series on preparing oh. for the dirty dancing scene. Yeah, for some reason I jumped right into the Jennifer Gray role uh, easily, <laughs> easily. Well, I was like, dude, I'm definitely corner. baby, and he's Swayze over there, and I don't know why, but I'm so comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> Fritzi, you said riding horseback is the option that scares you the most. Why is that? Yeah, the, I don't mind getting on a horse, but the whole shirtless thing, I don't think I'm in game shape for that. It's certainly not fair to Paulie, regardless of who's going to be uh, holding on to the other one. It's just, uh, there's just nothing remotely positive about that. Wait, 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 wait. Holding on. That wasn't even, you just added something to the wheel. Well, I, I, I thought it was, it was possibly two of us were going to be like on, a, on, one on, horse. on one horse together. Yeah, but why, so someone, we someone don't have that for our hand. Someone probably has to hold on to the other one to uh, keep balance. I would much, much rather roll <laughs> off and get trampled by a horse. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I may throw myself <laughs> under the horse's hooves with a smile on my yeah, face as I get trampled. Much that. better off getting kicked off the horse and trampled. Oh, Vladimir Please. putting it in. Well, hopefully it's not because of flashbacks to <laughs> Dallas. Are you afraid of possibly getting bucked off old Mr. Ed? That's definitely part of it. I still have a groin hernia to uh, to deal with and it has to be taken care of. The guy point. who ran that machine, he had it on the very lowest setting. It was like half of one. <laughs> and he looks at me, I can't go any slower. I can't go any I'm like, slower. I was like begging. They brought back flashbacks of being a camper on this ride called the Tilt-A-Whirl. And I begged the guy to stop the ride in the middle. And I kind of got laughed at. And I literally had the guy stop it in the middle of the ride so I can get off. So Living on the edge. You're the lucky fellow who will be on either side of Fritzy in that moment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Take a towel oh, for the boobs, wet Polly, when you're on the horse. Coming up, we'll see if the Danettes approve of the latest R-rated fashions, and uh, do they even really care about hockey? Stay tuned. Did you guys see the Rihanna dress, Paulie? I did not. Are you, how is that possible? Seaton, did you see that dress? Of course. Of course. Fritzy, I know you saw the Rihanna dress. I saw it a couple times. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, it left nothing to the imagination. McLovin, did you see the dress? Nope. Oh, my God. Say yes to the dress. How did you not see? It's impossible to turn on TV and you don't have somebody talking about this thing. Welcome back to the box score. Guys, the boss was shocked that most of you hadn't laid your eyes on the see-through dress that Rihanna wore at the Fashion Awards a couple days ago. Fritzi, uh, you're fashion police, so what do you give it? Yeah, I gotta go pretty uh, high on that. You know, initial, my initial glance was it's a little sloppy and appropriate, but oh. then upon further ogling and staring and, uh, you know, playing with the uh, the whole magnifying of the images, um, I'll give that a strong, a strong eight, eight and a half. Uh, I thought uh, she pulled it off quite nicely, even though it really was uh, a little questionable for uh, that type of uh, that type of environment. Yeah, maybe Chris Brown pulled it off. Well, we didn't want box score viewers to be left <laughs> out, so let's take a peek. Oh, and wow! Oh, box score starts now. McLovin, maybe we add you wearing this dress to the Wheel of Punishment. <laughs> Can't afford it. It's got kind of a flapper look Actually, going on there. I wouldn't terribly mind that dress. There's worse things. A hundred times better than anything that's going to end up on the Wheel of Punishment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to wear that to a fashion award show? Yeah. No, I'm just saying, is it that fashionable? Yeah, I mean... I think Fashion Award is really the only place that you can wear that. If you wore it to, say, a funeral or something, that would be like, whoa, that's weird. But well, not a funeral, maybe something away. in between, like the Oscars or something. I wasn't Even the Oscars. Just trying like, a little you gotta too put hard. your nips yeah. away, Rihanna. Yeah. yeah. Well, the hat made it modest. Fritzy, I'm afraid to ask this, but uh, if you were to somehow get lucky with Rihanna, would you leave the dress on? Yeah. I would, and you know, then uh, you know, gradually we'll see what happens to it uh, over a period of time. But uh, you know, she uh, she's a sexy woman, and uh, she uh, she pulled it off, and uh, you know, I might uh, pull it off as well. Uh, from, from girl talk to uh, car talk, uh, Polly was Jay Leno listening yesterday, uh, or did you guys reach out to him after the uh, classic car topic? That's a tough one, Broccoli. Sometimes when we reach out for someone. The publicist or agent goes, oh, he's a big fan of your show, and he was he was actually listening to the show. And I'd say it's about 50% of the time they're not telling the truth, but it feels really good when they say, yes, my client listens to your show all the time. I like that. Even if they're lying to me, I like being lied to, and uh, it works. Well, Jay did join the show and gave us his take on the whole Donald Sterling saga. Here's a guy who paid the biggest fine 
in the history of racial discrimination, and nobody said anything. But as soon as you have a 31-year-old girlfriend, it's a huge news story. <laughs> you know, I remember years ago when I when I first started guest hosting the Tonight Show. I remember the Iran Contra scandal. Yeah. Nothing. Couldn't get on the papers. Nothing. Nothing. Fawn Hall put some documents in her panties. <laughs> Front page news. What kind of panties? Who made them? Were they Hanes? You know, I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah, there's got to be a certain amount of, uh, I don't know if it's sleaze or juice or sex or what it is, but there are some things that are, like, really hot and other things that is just sort of like, well, yeah, that's probably a big deal, huh? I, you know, I've always heard and I've heard, seen certain examples. Jay Leno's got a really uh, raw sense of humor, kind of a dirty comic sense of humor. Before he was on Tonight Show, he was a raw comedian on stage, and he never got to use it on Tonight Show. So when he goes places like this, it's almost like, hey, man, I got nothing to lose. I got, like, $100 million in the bank. I'm going to make some jokes that are a little racier than he would on that he would have made, he made of those. a joke about like a uh, guy Pepper. like about pedophiles too yeah. and that it was like whoa oh my Jay, did you hear what Jay Leno just right. said it doesn't match the tonight show but yeah. it's great took a page from norm mcdonald Polly, it's well documented you're a car lover but today one of your other loves jack link's beef jerky became a sponsor of the show how oh. pumped are you and uh, are you targeting any other selfish products for the show Always, uh, is the answer to that last question, always looking out for number one. Um, yeah, it, it's a cool thing about working on a show that's sports related. Um, there's certain guy products that we've been able to uh, partner with, but I want more. Like, I want an entire wall of condiments, like hot sauces, steak sauces, uh, specialty mustards. I'm not going to stop with just beef jerky. And then we probably need something to grill all of the products. Yes. That, you know, we could use those on certain shanks of meat, and then we're going to need a grill sort of do that. We currently have an opening for that as well. And a meat what sponsor, I... you need meat to put on the grill, a high-end meat I like sponsor. That. I like that. <laughs> Wait, is this grill inside? It rhymes with Bomaha Bakes. <laughs> oh, I like that. Nice, <laughs> nice. Up next, the Stanley Cup final is ready to go, but are the Danettes on board? We'll find out next. Welcome back to the box score. The puck finally drops at the Stanley Cup final tonight. We thought we would test your hockey knowledge once more, so let's see what you got with a little Stanley Cup trivia. It's row versus row, and there are steals. Yay. All right, first question, front row. The Kings call Staples Center their home, but what arena did they play in before uh, they were downtown? Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, man. LA Forum? Uh, it was the LA Forum, yes, absolutely. So, well done, Paul. Got That's lucky. Back row, Western. your turn. We're allowing, they've allowed the Bazina Trophy is awarded to the best player at which position each season? Is that the goalie one? Which one's the current smite? <laughs> It's got to be. There's the heart. There's the best trophy is the goalie one. Okay, right? well, or is it the big score? I love the Vizina trophy. It's one of my favorite <laughs> trophies. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. We're going to go goalie? We're going to go goal. The top goalie gets the Vizina trophy. <laughs> yes, it was the Vizina trophy. That's Front row. Really decisive. Yeah, we're, we're all hockey fans here. Front row, who was the, the Rangers captain when they won their last Stanley Cup? Come on. Come on. This is what they get. Mark Messier. What's, yeah, it was Mark Messier. I think his nickname Mark. was the captain. The genius is back row. The Kings Jarrett Stoll is dating Messier. which former Dancing with the Stars contestant? That's well, right up your wheelhouse. Oh, buddy, yeah. Dancing Did, with the Stars. Max. Dating. Gosh, I have no idea. And I should know this. <laughs> Who's like somebody that would date a hockey player? Don't say Carol All. I think uh, we go with the steal on this. Who is it? The, who was the who's the pretty blonde that uh, almost married uh time limit? Is it? Cups almost Jennifer. over. Jennifer. Give us an answer. <laughs> who's the pretty blonde? <laughs> go, 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 throw uh, it out. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't just, even know the full name of any of the dance. You guess anything? They're all. A front row you go. Can we jump in. I'm gonna jump in here with a steal. I wanna say Aaron Andrews. Oh, was it Aaron Andrews? Yes, it was. Oh, probiotics. Boom! Probiotics. Probiotics, He's guys. On. He's on. Probiotics. I thought it was the one-legged woman married to Paul McCartney. Front row, you're up. How many game sevens did the Kings win to get to the Stanley Cup final? <laughs> this season, this they have three. Three. Was it three? Yes, it absolutely was three. 
Mark Messier. And finally, so. back row. Fritz, you're a big Rangers fan. What is goaltender Henrik Lundqvist, Lundqvist uh, nickname? Yeah. Lundy? Lundy. Lundy. You know his nickname? They call him heard it. the Conquist on New York course. Radio the other day. Stop. Oh, man. I'm with, oh, I know this. Heine? The puck stopper? Henry Lundy. It's like a, it's got like a Swedish like is thing. It, is it based off his name? It's something about like the, the Swedish window. chef. Foos and 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 I heard this just the other day. Lundy. Front row, end it for us, please. Mm. Mike. Ikea. <laughs> we have no idea where won this thing. Was it Ikea? No, it is, uh, it is the king. King Henrik Lundqvist, or Lundqvist. Roro, you win! Oh my goodness. Congratulations. That's not, that's not getting a lot of traction, that nickname. All right, stay right there, because when we return, <laughs> we'll find out what talent 50 Cent and Fritzy share, and it's not just spitting rhymes. Welcome back to the box score. McLovin, please take us back to the night that you thought you spotted Clinton Portis at the drafts at the draft party. Okay, so there's this guy there who is uh, wearing a jacket and a blue shirt and a tie. Bow and I'd seen a lot bow of tie. pictures, a bow tie. <laughs> I'd seen a lot of pictures of Clinton Portis wearing a bow tie around town. It kind of looked like him. <laughs> Football, we're near the draft. I figured it had to be Clinton Portis. Seaton, how much grief did the boss give McLovin over the years? Oh, are you kidding me? It's like one of the longest running jokes. <laughs> We've had it. Once a week, somebody said, dude, remember the time you thought you saw Clinton Portis address the draft? <laughs> and we all bust up laughing because the idea of it actually being him was just so absurd. Well, you guys had Clinton on today, and DP wanted to put one final stamp on the story. So would you let us know, would you confirm or deny, were you at the drafts at the draft party a couple of years ago, Clinton? I actually was. <laughs> I, actually, I actually was. Okay. Look at that. All right. Well, then, you look good, man. Um, hey. I, I stand corrected, and uh, I appreciate you, uh, man, clearing that up. I For years, I've been yelling at McLovin that he embarrassed us because I said that wasn't Clinton Portis. So, McLovin, hey. I'm sorry. I bet a lot of things were running through Clinton Portis' mind at the time. Hey, what the heck is, who's McLevin? What is he talking about? I mean, you know, the guy is in a concussion lawsuit, so what, three years ago, I'm not sure he remembers that. Means good. <laughs> but even so, I mean, he's probably been at so many events and parties. I don't Maybe think he, he remembers. Thought, yeah, he's been at so many things. I mean, we've seen him at like three different parties. Oh, you parties think he may not even understood what we were talking about? Well, he draft goes to many draft-related parties yeah. that are sponsor-related. We see him all over the place, so at least the guy that looks like him, so he might not, he I might think, have misrecalled. I think he would have said, you know, I'm not sure what you guys are talking about, or uh, he sounded genuinely, it's like he genuinely knew what draft the draft was, and that's Or he was there. And spotted him. <laughs> that was the more random one, though, when we went to this, like, really fancy cigar place in New York City, and we, <laughs> those three Danettes, uh, me, Paulie, and uh, McLevin, we go to walk into this party, and we're standing there hanging out, and after about 45 minutes, it dawned on us that we're at the completely wrong party. <laughs> Fake Clinton Portis was there too. Yes. He was there, standing next to it. It was the most random. Wait, that was the real Clinton Portis, right? Or okay, real. You all right? I mean, I don't know if who, which Clinton Portis that was, but it was a guy <laughs> like that. No, no, no. And, and then about five minutes later, we were walking in the other room, and there's this tall, really good-looking dude in good shape. And goes. That kind of looks like a football player. I'm like, yeah, it's Tony Gonzalez. He's going in the whole thing <laughs> yeah. in like 30 seconds. <laughs> no, that, and it was Chad Steele. It was uh, Sage Seal's brother, who's yeah. on tomorrow, which I also got wrong. And then, this is even worse, Rich, I thought I saw Richard Sherman, it was Sydney Rice, all <laughs> in one night. Nice. <laughs> three three massive mistakes. Nice. Paul, do you think Dan was genuinely shocked? I think we all were. Uh, I've I got to tell you, this was no bit. Um, you know, I, I wish I would have told uh, Clinton Portis to play along with the bit and say, yeah, I was there. No, I, he, this was not a setup at all. I think Clinton Portis thinks he was at our draft party. Guys, last week we were treated to a fantastic video. 50 Cent going just a bit outside with the ceremonial first pitch. Fritzy, I believe you uncovered a story that gets to the bottom of what happened. 
I did. R reportedly, he's uh, and he's saying he was joking, but who knows? He said that excessive masturbation caused him to throw a pitch like that. And all I can say, and I'll leave it at that, is uh, a certain Danette threw out a first pitch and uh, did a lot better. And uh, you know, we all know what uh, my background might include. So, so you debunk the theory. I'm going to totally debunk the theory. I think I'm going to let my pitch stand for itself, and I don't see how. Uh, what he said he did would affect the pitch in any way, certainly not to that extent. Masturbate or die trying? You know, there's a couple of different angles here you could take. Uh, it may have been forearm pain, may not have been a proper hand drying situation. I mean, Fritzy, you know how slippery lotion is. It is. So uh, I think there's a lot of different areas we could go into with this. See, and I think I respect your opinion or most not. on this because of uh, you've never been injured doing this. And it's all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I can handle it. Mr. Uh, by the way, guys, California Chrome has drawn a number two uh, post position for Saturday and is a three to five favorite. Seaton McLovin, are you guys nervous? Well, I hadn't been up until about 30 seconds ago for some reason. I thought, oh crap, we have no chance of winning this. And I'm somehow going to be sitting like this molding clay with McLovin behind me as the <laughs> Everly Brothers well, play or whoever it is. Number two Isley hasn't probably. won since 94. That was, I think, Tabasco Cat. And then there hasn't been a triple crown winner out of the number two position since 1943. So he's going to get boxed in. It's long overdue. See, California Chrome wants to make a run in the second half. I'm very happy about this position, Brock. Uh, you can read it in my column on Daily Racing Form. I wonder Fritzy, what the odds are. Chrome free. Chrome free, baby. I wonder what the uh, odds are for I Shat the Barn. Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Mm. NHL on NBC analyst Eddie Olchick will join us off of tonight's uh, Rangers Kings Game 1. Uh, Sage Steele of NBA Countdown on the Mothership uh, will preview Game 1 of the NBA Finals. And uh, our friend Rich Eisen of the NFL Network uh, stops by as well all on uh, Thursday. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you for watching the box score. Set your DVR or tune in weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, only on Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!